Hello everyone, in this video let us talk about uh, Drupal Development Workflow. If you are wondering what is the best practice to manage your Drupal site when you have a local environment, you might also have a staging environment and you also maybe have of course your actual production. So in this video, I want to talk uh, about uh, how you can manage uh, this uh, workflow where uh, you will do your uh, development on your local machine. And uh, you also want to, of course, uh, deploy it on a server. So this video is of course, focused on uh, Drupal 8. And uh, while I'm actually making this video, I also want to share that uh, this is something that I have also learned recently because uh, I have been trying to understand uh, the best way to manage this uh, workflow. So I want to tell you something about Composer. If you are trying to build a site uh, using Composer, then uh, uh, or rather I should say if you're trying to build a site in Drupal 8, then Although you can live without Composer, but uh, it is a bit uh, difficult because Composer actually makes your life a lot uh, simpler because you can easily install modules, you can easily install uh, dependencies and uh, there are of course a lot of other things that you can do with uh, Composer. So if you're trying to use Drupal and if you are struggling with Composer, uh, if you if you are probably wondering whether you should run Composer on production or not, whether you should use only Composer on your local environment, and what is the best way uh, when it comes to developing a site using Drupal. So in this video, I'll of course uh, uh, try to answer those specific questions because I also encountered those uh, problems. So let us uh, uh, do it uh, very quickly. And of course, uh, don't worry about uh, if there are certain things that are not clear, uh, please ask me questions, add a comment, and I'll continue making more videos on this uh, topic, uh, like what is the best practice of managing a Drupal development or uh, Drupal development workflow as a whole. So one thing which I want to talk about is this uh, project called uh, Drupal Composer. You can of course download Drupal from uh, the official website drupal.org and you can try to manage Composer or your Drupal site using Composer. That can work but I find this project really interesting because uh, uh, when you follow the instructions, not only you can have a Drupal installation which will be presented to you, which will be basically brought to your local development environment uh, so you, you can actually set up a Drupal site, Drupal 8 site using Composer. So it is basically a startup kit using Composer and it has uh, a different file structure. So when you run this command, Composer create project and uh, blah, 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 you can copy this command and you can just paste it in your, uh, uh, on your local uh, environment. It will, it will basically set up a Drupal site for you. And uh, you can also create uh, uh, your or basically you can install your Drupal very quickly if you follow their instructions. So that is number one. You can uh, use this uh, package. You can use this uh, startup kit uh, to manage your Drupal project using Composer. So if you are trying to use Composer, if you want to use Composer, then this is my personal recommendation. I was able to use it really well. And so far it seems to be working fine. So you can of course follow this uh, this page and you will figure out, uh, you will actually um, come to know about uh, what all you can do using uh, this uh, startup kit. Now, in this video, I want to talk to you about uh, my development workflow. And uh, this is of course uh, still in uh, progress. I'll probably make more videos, but this is what I have been doing, what I am doing so far. So I have a Drupal site which I develop on my local environment. So this is my local dev and let us call it dev. And I also have my 
actual uh, server where my site is uh, live let us call this uh, live so what i did so far i used a drupal composer project to simply install uh, drupal on uh, my local environment so i have a drupal site ready i can install drupal i actually installed uh, drupal um, and uh, it worked really well so far i mean uh, uh, i was able to a drupal i was able to install drupal 8 so after you install drupal 8 all you need to do if you want to let us say um, um add a new module so you just do composer require and something like this like if you type in this command composer followed by require and uh, let us say if you want to install uh, c tools which is uh, one of uh, c tools which is probably uh, a very common uh, module so just install your uh, module do your local development on your local environment of course uh, and uh, once you are ready with um, uh, once you're ready uh, for actually deploying your site to your production so what you can do you can actually export the configuration so this can be done using uh, of course your uh, uh, ui there is there is a way to do it but uh, you can also do it with uh, uh, your drupal console that actually comes with your drupal composer so when you install drupal Com Com uh, composer it comes with uh, uh, of course composer it comes with the drush and it, it also comes with the drupal console so using drupal console uh, you can actually export your configurations so you can export your configurations and when you export your configurations it will be exported to your sync folder so there is a sync folder and uh, this will be sent to your sync folder and once you have these configurations or and let us say you install a new module so when you install a new module this information will be stored in your uh, composer dot uh, log file and uh, uh, after installing a new module or maybe if you're doing some changes you can export your configurations and that at, at this particular point you can uh, just uh, commit your changes so when you do git commit or git uh, you know after you do do git commit uh, you can of course push your changes so when you uh, git commit and when you git push your uh, uh, information about the new modules uh, is actually stored in this file composer.log uh, log file and your co configurations are also stored in your sync file so these uh, changes are uh, are basically pushed to your uh, repository and once you push your repository to your uh, of course uh, once you push your ch push your uh, changes to repository you can go back to your uh, your prod and when you do a git pull so first you do you will probably do a git pull and then you will uh, run um, I, and by the way on your prod i'm assuming that you have a blank drupal site or you you can basically install uh, in the beginning a clone of your local development environment a fresh one this is what i did so after installing Drupal on my local, I also installed the same thing on my production. And in fact, on production, I just, what I did was I simply installed a new Drupal installation and I just copied the UUID. So, um, so that uh, when you do your uh, configuration export, uh, the prod can actually take those, uh, uh, those configuration changes. So if your UUID is same, you will be able to um, basically export and import on your, your configurations basically so on production uh, i was talking about uh, you, you can only do this when you have already a drupal site which is a clone of your local and when i say clone i mean the the uh, the id is same so when you do git pull your changes will be um, pulled of course so uh, the the thing that you need to notice here is that since you're using composer composer is a de dependency manager you're supposed to manage your dependencies using composer so you're only committing your uh, composer.log file so when you run your composer install on uh, your server and by the way this can be your staging server this can be 
production right now i'm doing it directly on my production server because this site is not really uh, used by anyone but uh, eventually i will uh, also create a staging and i will uh, probably use it use staging for of course testing so when you do your uh, composer install on your on your server your module will be the same module like c2 will be installed and uh, after you do composer install you can uh, do your import of uh, your uh, configurations and when you do import of your configurations you already have your uh, configurations that you committed in your sync folder so these configurations will be imported on your server on your drupal site on uh, your live maybe and uh, whatever changes that you must have done like uh, you maybe you added a new content type or you added a new view so far it seems to be working for me uh, I think there are some limitations, but uh, it, it has been working so far. So I'm I'm quite uh, happy with that. So once you do these things, your site, uh, one thing you can also do is you can also clear the cache. So once you import your configurations, also uh, clear the cache so that, uh, so there's a command for doing this. So it's a rebuild. I'll probably create a blog and I'll probably give you these instructions step by step so after clearing the cache you basically have a site on production which is like a, a clone of your development environment but it won't have your uh, it won't have your files it won't have your content but it is really up to you how you want to manage it there are some other modules that can also help you in uh, moving the content and uh, files Ideally, you don't need to have uh, your uh, content pushed from local to production. Uh, you, you, you will, of course, have your latest content on production. And from time to time, you may want to uh, dump it on your local uh, so that you have some uh, only the content, not the configuration, because your configurations should go from local to production. But your data or your content should come from production to local. So this uh, has been working quite well for me because uh, what I was doing after my after I clear the cache on my production I copy the files and then of course I clear the cache so if you have let us say some files that you also want to transfer to your production so I have been doing it uh, manually by simply using RS uh, 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 like remote uh, combi uh, using uh, SCP uh, or using SSH but uh, I need to figure out uh, the best practice for doing it. And uh, if you are doing, let us say, any changes on your local environment, for example, let us say you have uh, a custom module that you have been developing, or in my case, I use Bootstrap, and uh, I also need to have a sub-theme uh, that I need to create using Bootstrap. So when you go to your local, or maybe when you take a look at your Drupal setup or directories you will find one um, directory called uh, module of course so there is a directory called module and there is a similar directory for uh, themes and within the uh, within this uh, uh, with these two directories there is a folder called contrib so anything that you uh, download from the uh, any module that you download from the drupal.org not manually but using drupal uh, require it will be moved to your contrib folder like c tools or maybe path auto but let us say if you have a custom module so there is a directory that you can create custom uh, both in your modules directory and also in your uh, themes directory so there is a directory in my themes folder called contrib and a custom folder that you can create and the thing is that when you look at your uh, git ignore file so if you look at your uh, git ignore file and by the way you don't need to do anything here because it comes with the startup kit drupal composer so contrib folder is actually ignored so anything that you download on your local won't be pushed to your repository but your uh, composer.log file will contain this information about any new module or theme that you download and when you go back to your production after doing your git pull the moment you do git 
uh, not git but composer install your uh, changes will be um, not your changes but your module uh, your themes that you must have downloaded will come back or will basically be downloaded using uh, composer install and then of course you can continue doing your work uh, on production so this is my workflow so far i still need to figure out a few more things but uh, it has been working quite well i come from drupal 7 background and i have a lot of websites in drupal 7 drupal 8 is definitely quite good it has been there for a, a while now i built my first proper drupal website i basically upgrade my drupal 7 to drupal 8 one of my website or in, in fact couple of my websites uh, around two years ago but i was hesitant in using drupal 8 for doing uh, proper development but you can't really run away from it if there are some new improvements uh, then you need to embrace those uh, uh, new changes because those changes were probably done for some uh, benefit uh, because in Drupal 8 the good thing about uh, uh, the workflow the Drupal development workflow is that you can actually store your configurations in your files and uh, that is really amazing I mean I know it was a bit of a pain in Drupal 7 there were some modules like features but I was never really able to use them properly but now Drupal 8 seems to be quite uh, good and I will continue uh, my journey in learning Drupal 8 and I will definitely share uh, my my experience my learnings so far so I hope this video was uh, useful thank you very much